this is really simple and straightforward, but I'm just curious because we've sort of reached that point now where I think I think the big moves are done. I, I mean, you know, we've mentioned they could add some veteran. I know Ashley just gave me the famous look. last words. What are you doing? <laughs> It's like one but, time you looked at me in the press box and said, this game's going real fast. And then I think it was the, like the Raiders game last year or something. I don't remember. Yeah, no, that was, that Famous was amateur last hour on my part. I should, I should have known better. I've been doing this long enough that I should have known better than to say that out loud in a press box. But <laughs> I, I just want to know, like, what is your favorite move so far? What, what is the move so far that you just like best that Andrew Barry has made um, in this off season? Mary Kay, what what is it? Well, I have got to say the trade for Elijah Moore. I've got to say that because, uh, you know, I they finally listened to me. They finally did something I said they should do. Um, so, no, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I wrote that column. And, again, it was funny because after I wrote it, I had someone saying to me, oh, I don't see that happening. I had, like, I kind of got called off the scent about it. Like, that's not happening. You know, like I, I felt like, Oh God, why did I even think that could happen? (laughs) And uh, so when it finally did, I was just as happy as, as anyone. Fair, but also that was like a really good move. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I mean, it was just a really smart, give up a second round pick, get a guy that has team control. I mean, there's, there's just a lot to like about it. Um, And it's even like, I can make the case that it's even still low risk enough that if it does go wrong, it's not the end of the world necessarily. Obviously you don't want that to happen and they, it would leave them in a tough spot at receiver, but it's not like they gave up, you know, two first round picks or a first and a second. Obviously they don't have those to give up, but you know, it's not like they gave up a ton necessarily to, to bring him in and it's not costing them a ton of money either. Yeah. I, let me just add real quick here um, that, you know, when we say they gave up a second round pick for him, in essence, they really didn't even do that necessarily. Another better way, I think, to look at the trade is that they moved down 32 spots from the second round to the third round because they picked up a third round pick in this deal. Uh, so that's basically all they did. They moved back 32 spots to pick up a potential starting receiver. I'm going to go with Dalvin Tomlinson. Like, number one, I think defensive tackle was just such a huge need given the numbers those guys put up last year. Um, I think he doesn't look like anybody else in that room. He's so much bigger than the guys they currently have. Um, So I think he's going to be really helpful in the run. I think even though he's not necessarily a guy who's going to get you a ton of sacks when we've talked to him and, and what he seems like he's really good at is flushing quarterbacks out so that his ends can maybe clean things up. And I think looking at the market as a whole, we know PFF had him rated as their number three best available defensive tackle in this free agency cycle. And the two guys above him, Deron Payne and Javon Hargrave, got huge deals that were almost double or like, I I can't do math, almost double, let's just say, what the Browns are paying him. So I think you got great value for him. You get another veteran in that room. Um, and I think it, you know, could be a really good start to helping turn around that room production wise. You know, part of me wants to say, Oboe, we've had that discussion before, but I actually think it's, um, I think it's going to be Juan Thornhill. I, I, I just like the idea of bringing in a young guy who has won, who's kind of had to grow into being a leader. I thought that was an interesting part uh, of when we talked to him is how he came into a veteran, a veteran defense. And then all of a sudden that defense became really young last year and they were playing a bunch of draft picks and he had to kind of learn how to lead that room. And I think there's something to having a guy that's still young, but who can walk in the locker room and say to some of these other young defenders, guys who are essentially his peers and say, kind of show off, you know, again, another NBA reference. People talk about Pat Riley throwing his rings on the table for free agents. Juan Thornhill could go in that locker room and throw his rings on the table and say, hey, do you guys want these? This is what it takes. I know what it takes. So I just like that. I like the idea of bringing in a guy who could potentially be a young leader. I think he might fit what they want out of that position a little more than John Johnson would have. Obviously, they believe that too. Um, So I, I just think this is a nice kind of under, not under the radar, but it's, a relatively inexpensive move 
And I think they got a guy who could maybe be that free safety for three or four years here.